Hi there, this is Prof. Johan from the Department of Chemical Engineering at the University of Pretoria. Welcome to my series on the Introduction to Chemical Engineering and Chemical Engineering Principles. Today's lecture video will be covering the ideal gas law. Now, I don't want to say too much about the ideal gas law, seeing that you're going to spend a lot of time on this in chemistry. But I want to focus a bit on the ideal gas law, what it stands for, and in chemical engineering, how are we going to use it? The ideal gas law is written as PV equals NRT, with B standing for pressure, V for volume, N for the number of moles in the system, R is the ideal gas constant, and T is temperature, absolute in Kelvins. Now the ideal gas law will hold true for most gases at most conditions. Only at extreme conditions, very, very high pressures, very low temperatures, or even very high temperatures, does the ideal gas law not hold true anymore. In these cases, we will use equations like the real gas equations in various different forms to describe the non-ideal behavior of the gases. But we can wait till next year when you do thermodynamics too to describe these things. Now that the ideal gas law is actually PV is related to N. T. So the pressure and the volume of the system is directly proportional to the number of moles and temperature in the system. The constant R is added to this equation so that we can get rid of the proportionality. Let's look at a few interesting cases when applying the ideal gas law. Let's say we have a first system and we change the conditions from the system from this first set of conditions to a new set of conditions. The only thing that we know between the first set of conditions and the second set of conditions is the number of moles in the system is equal. We state this, for instance, that it's a closed system, and we change the conditions, but the number of moles stay the same. Now, we know that the ideal gas law tells us that PV equals NRT at the first conditions. And we also know that there's the ideal gas law for the second set of conditions. Because R is a constant, it's the same on both sides. We have stated that N is the same on both sides. N1 equals to N2. This means that NR must be equal to NR on both sides. We could have rewritten these two equations that NR equals to PV over T for conditions 2 and equals to PV over T. One. And from this we can see that PVT for conditions 1 must be equal to PV over T for conditions 2. Or we could write that P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2. But we could also have had the system where the conditions between system 1 and 2 is such that only the temperature is the same. Then we would have had PV over N condition 1 must be equal to PV over N at conditions 2. Because RT would be the same whether it's condition 1 or condition 2. And you can see where this is going. We can have V1 over T1 equals to V2 over T2 where P and N are constant. We could have P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2 when V and N is constant and so forth. If all the conditions are changing, we have P, V over N, T at 1 is equal to P, V over N, T at 2. And so you can play with these for different systems to have values, to calculate the values of a new set of conditions by knowing which parameters stay constant between the different conditions and which parameters change between the different conditions. I hope this video is helpful.